Hi Bianca, how are you doing? <laughs> good, how are you? I'm good, I'm good, thanks. How was your Easter weekend? It was good. Yeah, I went down. I went down the coast uh, here in Australia and spent some time with the family. Super cool. It's really great. Very lucky nice. that we we're able to do that at the moment. Um, how was your Easter long weekend? It was really, really chill. Like we yeah. went for a nature walk on the Saturday at the national park. Is it the national park? The one down south, like yeah. near Park Cronulla. And oh, yeah. then on the Sunday, we went for a barbecue or like a picnic at a lake north. That was very like nature which was cool. So uh, portrait illustration is what we're here to chat about and talk about. I want to start a Polaroid series. So portraits of friends in a kind of Polaroid format. So I'm going to do another oh, cool. one today, um, which, yeah, we're going to get started on. So I'll awesome. take you there. All awesome. right, so this is just a new, a new file that I've preloaded. Um, merge. And I've saved a little Polaroid PNG from the net, so I'm just going to place it in there. I'm going to center it right. Oh, cool. So it's like there a PNG, go. like a Polaroid PNG. Yeah. I'm just going to drop the background behind there. I don't know if this is the color we're going to go with. And from libraries, which I do this often with our um, our, our lives, I'll, I'll do an outline of the image that I want to draw ahead of time in my sketchbook and then with my phone using Adobe Capture app, which is free to download, um, I just take a photo and it converts it to a vector and then it's available on your Adobe Cloud and then you just drop it into your artwork. So I dropped it in, I've rasterized it, so now it's a layer that we're going to work from. But I'm not going to use it as the final outline, I'm going to create my own. So we're going to go in with... <laughs> But I was going off the image here on my phone, so I need to put that up. But sometimes I'll put it on the screen as well, um, so I have it side by side with the artwork. What are you using to draw? Like, what device are you using? Um, this is my Microsoft Surface Studio. Yep. It's really good because it's a massive, massive screen, so I just draw directly on, which is really cool. Nice. No going back now after this. <laughs> Um, so it's like a bigger screen and you're drawing directly onto the screen itself. And yeah. That's the best, you found that's exactly. the best the best way to work? Oh, of course. Hmm. Amazing. I love it. With art, I don't know if a lot of people are the same, but my least favorite part is definitely like getting the shapes down. My favorite is the coloring, like getting the rendering all the time. Right. It's always been my face. <laughs> And a lot of a lot of artists that they feel the same way. So I wonder if it's the universal thing or just just people who like color. <laughs> I guess it depends on approach because if you were drawing, you can choose to make it uh, just like a like a not a literal interpretation. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So it depends. You get me? Like so, I guess it maybe it depends on the type of artist you are. If you're someone who with me, I, the part of my drawings that are less realistic in the color, I'd really make stuff super separated and I'll change stuff up. And I actually don't like it to look too realistic with my shading. Because mm. sometimes it just feels like, what's the point? If it looks like a photo, which is what I used to do um, when I first started art, but it has less color character. And it's mm. just like, what's the point if you just get a photo, you know, put a bit yeah, yourself true. into it. So uh, right now I'm just drawing alternate lines because I didn't like the, the one that comes from the, um, the capture is a vector, so the lines are really smooth and I want more sticky vibes, so I'm just doing that now. And then we'll, we can drop that away. Yeah, nice. So the original like sketch outline, like the, the vectors that have come through, that's not is that going to make it through to the final? Artwork, no. or will you keep that, or you no. eventually? So you kind of get rid of that, and then you'll redo the lines with like, you know, obviously the textured, textured kind of brush like over the top. So it's all, yeah. Yep. A lot of the time, I'll just draw with the shapes. So I won't do an outline first. I'll just like look at the image and see what shapes each color is making. Um, it's a different way to observe, but it takes a lot longer. So just for the sake of the the people watching. Um, I pre-did a bit just because it can, it can be, I find like watching someone color is a bit therapeutic, but watching someone draw lines, if it's taking ages, is just not fun at all. 
That's super cool. I love the texture of the hair. Oh, thanks. It's still not finished, obviously, but you know, as well, I'm actually liking it with this extra outline, but we'll see. I might not at the end. It's just a bit, I don't know. We'll see once I've got the shading. That's the good thing about working in layers, baby. You can change your mind <laughs> and it doesn't affect anything. <laughs> So as I mentioned with my color, I like to do way more vibrant than it is and like not exactly real. So mm. because it's not what you're seeing, it's kind of trial and error as well because something might look too much or whatever. That's super cool. I love the white highlights. It's like really subtle, yeah. but they, they add a lot. They do. You can have the flattest image and the minute you add a little bit of highlight, it looks like already. But um, a bit more shading is always fun. And when it comes to color, like, did you have like a planned out kind of, you know, group of colors that you're using here? Because I noticed you're using the color picker quite a lot. So just a lot of trial and error. Um, I kind of end up, I use the color picker so much that I know which colors I like. Mm. So it's basically the same. I almost use this exact same pink every time, but I just know where it is. Right. On color picker yeah <laughs> that's great some colors yeah some colors i just know that i like that one and i know where it is yeah um but others i'll just will just be trial and error which is often like stuff i add in like the color of the background or like flowers or spray paint stuff like that i like to do like a lot of red and pink on the nose and the cheeks and the fingers just because stylistically i like it mm. But my my mom actually hates it because it makes them look like they have a cold. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also added like this kind of softened edge. You know how like I don't know for some reason Polaroids always have like a little bit of like a darker edge just because yeah. of the way it's developed. Like a vignette. So I added that for yeah exactly. So that's there. <laughs> um, and yeah, I added a bit of texture to the background. It was pink before, but I changed it to gray. Um, I may change it back to pink because this is looking a bit dark, but I'm hoping that once we add the spray, um, it'll be much, much brighter. All right. So I'm going to get cracking with, um, some highlights now. So I, I want the cheeks, I think to be a bit brighter and more, um, unrealistic <laughs> something that really pops i was just gonna say i noticed that you've added some texture to the um is it a beanie what do we call it i mean i know it's a hat but maybe we can get... yeah yeah like a teddy yeah i guess it's a beanie yeah i added some texture i actually don't know if i like the texture that much but um we can always take it out we'll see see how we go did you add it on a different layer I, so that if you don't like it, you can take it out super yeah. easy or do you need to? I'm pretty sure I did. <laughs> I look at all the layers. <laughs> um, I hope I did because if I didn't, that's a bit silly of me. <laughs> but, and I should have labeled all these layers too. Honestly, that's number one tip. Work in layers and label them. I might even enlarge the eyes and stuff um, and lips. I just want to make it a little bit more cartoony. I realized I did that with the first one. So I want it to kind of match these eyelashes are nuts. Just adding in a little tooth gap. It should probably be a bit to the side, that side. How does one know when you've outgrown an art style? I think when you're like bored. So right. that's, that's been my experience anyway. Like you get bored of, um, doing stuff and you're just like, ah, oh, I, I feel like I need to be trying something new or I'm not, I'm not learning. I'm not progressing. I'm not pushing any barriers right now, whatever. Um, so yeah, that for me, that's, that's when I've changed. Yeah. So just adding a bit of highlight. Um, but I definitely want to add more color too, cause I feel like she's a bit dull, but yeah, with these ones, I definitely, the postcards, uh, portrait series, postcard, not po postcard, Polaroid oh. portrait series. I want it to be a bit grungier than what um, I usually do, just so I know for a little bit of point of difference. Even more grunge. Turn up the grunge. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just adding some different colors and highlights to the hair, just to bring a bring the gal out a little bit, mm -hmm. give her a bit of color. Um, 
The photo I'm going off isn't the best quality. It's like really, really dark and like low lighting and no, no detail at all. So I'm just kind of making things up, which is fun. Yeah. And you, you just use it like user reference, like on your phone. So you're just, when you're looking over to the right, it's just, you know, you've just got it up on your phone and just kind of glancing at it every mm -hmm. now and then. Um, yeah. For reference. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. It's just down here at the moment. Mm. So changing the hue and saturation mm. of, well, just the hue, sorry, um, on just the yeah. particular layer. So you've brought, you've got the coloring because you've got it on a separate layer. You can just open that hue and saturation slider and just mm -hmm. change, change everything kind of in one hit. Yeah, which I love. Do you do so that a lot? Simple. Yeah, yeah, a lot, especially with backgrounds because um, sometimes you'll start with a background, but then the colors you're using in the portrait don't really like it pop against the background so you have to change it oh um you say this is too large but um i usually do three thousand like i'll do a square i'll do three thousand by three thousand pixels with 300 or 400 dpi and that's just i do that and then i literally usually it's for instagram but if i'm doing something like an album cover i'll do it the same as well maybe even bigger just in case mm. um but i don't find that it's too massive like it everything handles it fine i've never found an issue like they say that if you upload to certain platforms if the file is too large it doesn't um upload very well but i haven't found that mm. i do this thing in some of my artwork sometimes where i do like a stylized spray paint thing yeah um so i'll show you guys where should i put i might put it here but i want it on top of the Polaroid. Cool. So just use a soft brush. And then with the hard brush, do some drip lines. And I just press shift down so it's a straight line. And I'll just shift them a bit. So I had to do it on top of the layer where our hero is, just because I want it to show on top of the actual Polaroid. So I'm right. just going to manually delete it from here. So it looks like it's sitting behind her. You know, the spray paint did bring it to life a bit. I'm actually glad of that. I was just going to ask like, so when you're, when you are like satisfied and finished with this, how do you, how do you mm -hmm. export everything? Do you export stuff like just as a JPEG? Do you do it as a save for web kind of JPEG? Is there anything Ooh, special? Smart. No, I just save it as a JPEG. Yep. Um, but I'll also keep it saved as a PSD file, yep. just so if I need it for future for any reason. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Layered PSD file. Because usually when I'm doing art, like, which is for myself, which is this stuff, um, it's just because I, I have the time and I'll pop it up on Instagram or something. But if it's for a client, I always ask what file types they need. Yeah. Um, just, I like asking every question at the beginning just to streamline because I hate back and forth things for no reason. Such a yeah. waste of time.